Her Majesty poses with the 17th century Saint Edward's crown for the first time since her coronation 65 years ago. 65 years ago, it was placed on the head of a 27-year-old Princess Elizabeth, signaling the moment she became queen. Now, for the first time since her coronation in 1953, Her Majesty has been reunited with the glittering, but little seen, Saint Edward's crown. Although many associate the British monarch with the imperial state crown, normally sported at the state opening of Parliament, the St. Edward's crown is used by the Archbishop of Canterbury at the actual moment of coronation. Made for Charles II in 1661 by the crown jeweler, Robert Diner, it was a replacement for the original, medieval crown which had been melted down in 1649 by the parliamentarians and was thought to date back to the 11th century royal saint, Edward the Confessor the last Anglo-Saxon king of England. Composed of a solid gold frame, set with tourmalins, white and yellow topazes, rubies, amethysts, sapphires, garnet, peridot, zircons, spinel, and aquamarines, mounted in enamel gold collets, it also has a velvet cap with an ermine band. Our present Queen's coronation, which took place at Westminster Abbey on June 2, 1953 after 16 months of planning, was watched by millions throughout the world for the first time on television. At the moment the Archbishop of Canterbury placed the St. Edward's crown on the young sovereign's head, a fanfare was played by the state trumpeters, triggering the gun salute from the Tower of London and a peal of the Abbey Bells. Despite being the nation's longest reigning monarch, the Queen, who will celebrate her 92nd birthday in April, has never worn the St. Edward's crown again. Indeed, Aside from a brief glimpse behind glass when she opened the jewel house at the Tower of London in 1994, she hasn't even seen it in the flesh. But Queen and Crown have now been reunited again for a stunning new collaboration between BBC One and the Royal Collection Trust, the charity responsible for one of the largest and most important art collections in the world. Entitled The Coronation, the hour-long film will reveal the story behind the Crown Jewels which consists of 140 items and 23,000 precious stones, and the ceremony in which they are used. For the first time, the Queen will also personally share memories of the ceremony, as well as that of her father King George V.I. in 1937. Viewing both private and official film footage, she recalls the day when the weight of both St. Edward's crown, and the hopes and expectations of a country recovering from war, were placed on her shoulders, saying, I've seen one coronation, and been the recipient in the other, which is pretty remarkable. The film, which is part of a series of programs across BBC television and radio revealing the treasures of the Royal Collection, also features eyewitness accounts of those who participated in the 1953 coronation, including a maid of honor who nearly fainted in the Abbey, and a 12-year-old choir boy who was left to sing solo when his overwhelmed colleagues lost their voices. Charlotte Moore BBC Director of Content said, It is a real honor to have Her Majesty the Queen revealing her intimate knowledge of the crown jewels, and fond childhood memories from when her father was crowned King George V.I. in this very special film for BBC One. In her own words, the Queen will bring to life the enduring symbolic importance of the coronation ceremonies for modern audiences to enjoy. Other programs in the BBC Royal Collection season include Art, Passion and Power, the story of the Royal Collection and Charles I's treasures reunited, as well as a radio broadcast revealing the captivating stories behind specific works of art in the Royal Collection through documentary material from the heavily guarded Royal Archives.